So today I'm going to talk about what to do when you pray and you feel stuck or you feel as if the prayer isn't working. What do you do when you pray and you feel stuck or you feel the prayer isn't working? If you've been a Christian for some time, you should have come to this place in your life. There will be either something you are aggressively praying about, when other things seem to be working so well and answer prayer, this specific one just seems to be an ongoing prayer, an ongoing prayer request. It could be something that has to do with childbirth. It could be something that has to do with funding for your business. It could be a job. It could be an approval. It could be something. You will just notice that everything seems answered and this particular thing, you know, seems to be ongoing. And for some people in extreme cases, they were going to have, it's going to be most of their prayer. And some people are quick to conclude just because their prayer is not answered that God is not faithful, it doesn't work. And that's what I want to provide perspective for because I know the feeling when you've prayed and you feel as if God is not faithful. I know, I know where it comes from. And I don't think it's unhuman, but I don't think you should still say that. I think it's a slow down. So the first thing I want to talk about today is this. When some people say they don't have answer prayers, is it really that they don't have answer prayers? Let's look at Acts chapter 3 and let's read the story. And I'm going to get my brother to help me again, you know, in Acts chapter 3. The Bible says in verse 1, And Peter and John went together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man leaned from his mother's womb. This man was carried. So come, come man. The Bible says, a certain man lame from his mother's womb. So this man was at the temple gate. He was lame for this. So be, be, pretend to be lame in, you know, yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. So you can see now, Babiala, Alakoba, you know. <laughs> so the Bible says, a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried. Whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. To ask of arms of them that entered into the temple. Whom seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask an arm. So he was asking arm. Um, and Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John said, Look on us. And he gave it unto them, expecting to receive something of them. And Peter said, Silver and gold I have not, but such as I have, I give unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, do what? Right. Let me hear you say it. Do what? Right. Next thing, he rose up and walk. Yes or no? No. no. The Bible says, Peter said, Rise up and walk. This is the situation. So I'm Peter, this is the layman, rise up and walk. And the man kept saying, uh-huh. But Peter, being experienced in answered prayer and knew how the power of God walk, see what Peter did. And Peter took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And what, see what the Bible says? The Bible says, and it took him by the right and lifted him up. And what? Immediately what happened? His feet that couldn't walk, his ankle that was paralyzed, received strength. Sometimes the reason why people don't have answer prayers is that answer prayers will come with action. Answer prayers will come with action. As long as he was sitting down there. Do you know what? If Peter did not have enough time, he would have just prayed for him and walked away. And would have said, hey, God did not want to heal him. Because that's what we say as human beings. But Peter said, mm -mm. God wants to heal him. So, guess what? It was when he took the step of faith that his healing manifested. So, Peter took his hand, stretched forth his hand. As he attempted to stand up, all of a sudden, his ankle and his leg received strength. Some people say God has not answered their prayer. It's not true. It's that God is waiting for you to take action. So that his power can be released. I'm telling you. Yeah, say, Father, I, <clears throat> Father, I, I, I command, I, I command contract. God is saying, after commanding contracts, go to all the places where there are contracts. Go and send your tender. Go and send your bid. Yeah, say, but they've not invited me. God said, take the first step and see my power. Many of you are waiting on God. God is saying, 
take the first step and see my power. God is saying, take the first step and see my power. He said, take the first step and see until the man got up, his ankle bone. It was when, when it was not when Peter prayed that his ankle bone received strength. It was when he attempted to get up that his ankle bones received strength. You prayed enough, it's time to take action. Take action and let their strength come. Are you here? Yes, sir. Yeah, I say, uh, I, I believe I receive my husband. I believe I receive my husband. In the name of Joker, my sister, you can't believe you see your husband that way. Go to where men can find you. <laughs> there are ladies in this place now. Every week, I believe I receive my husband. You believe you receive? Are you where men can find you? Come to where can men find me? Go to Baba's, Baba's shop. They are there. Go up to my pastor there. Take your car to the mechanic. You will see that men aggregates on Saturday at mechanic stations. And once a lady gets there, no, 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 I handle the lady. I handle the, they will just say, no, no, I, handle, ah, I don't like this kind of lady. She's also responsible. She brings her car. But, but many of you are praying. You are praying and folding your hands because you are waiting for a sign. God says, until you step out, until you step out, the power can be released. Do you know something, ladies and gentlemen? Let me give you this. Very powerful. Ladies and let me give you this. Do you know that there are people that apply, are praying for funding? If you ask them, where are the financials of your company? I don't have. If someone wants to fund your company, what would they ask you? No wonder the Bible says, faith without works is dead. Yeah. And these people will keep saying that God is not faithful. God has not answered and God is saying, take the action, power will manifest. Take the action, power will manifest. Take the action, power will manifest. Are, are you here? Yes, sir. Are you here? Yes, sir. You prayed enough, take action. You have prayed enough, take action. Yeah, I received my job, I received my job. I said, my brother, you have confessed enough, apply to where you want the job. After several, as a single guy, you say that I'm delayed in marriage. I'm looking for someone to marry. After service, you hurry to your car. Why are you hurrying for? As you have come now, you have come to the assembly of the brethren. After service, just slow down and observe. Hey. Hey. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So you see a lot of Christians praying, 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 but there is no practical action that they are taking towards their goal. second reason why people do not receive answer to prayers is wrong confession in the place of prayer we make positive confession in the name of Jesus what happens is this when people leave the place of prayer they make confession that cancels what they said in prayer and let me tell you something eh? no matter how many positive you said in prayer negative times positive is negative. Yeah. So once you introduce a negative life, it will cancel out what you are saying. Hey. In the place of prayer, Father, bless the work of my hands. Next level, I'll be relocated in Jesus' name. You get to the office. How are things? Things are so dry. Things are terrible. I don't even understand myself. I don't understand this country. I'm tired. Any moment I will check out. You don't understand the very things you are saying will destroy your prayer. That was the problem with Zachariah. The angel that appeared to Zachariah in Luke chapter 1. Angel said, Zachariah, I've come because of your prayers. Zachariah began to talk nonsense. Our angel said, if you keep talking this way, you will ruin destiny. He didn't say you'll be blind though. He said you will be what? Dumb. Why? Because the angel understood you can use your mouth to ruin your destiny. I'm telling you the truth. Many people have cancelled their answers to prayer. Let me show you something quickly. In the book of Daniel. I, I didn't intend to do this, but in fact, I didn't even say it in the other services. In the book of Daniel. Whew. Chapter 10. Verse 
Verse 12. This was when I want to every this I want to notice this verse because it can change your life. Daniel had prayed for 21 days, no answer. But why did the answer come through? Read. When the angel eventually came after 21 days, see what the angel said. Then the angel said to me, Father Daniel, from, from the first day that thou seek your heart to understand and to chasten yourself for the Lord, thy words were what? Thy words were heard. And what happened? And, and I comfort thy words. He said, once you prayed, your words were heard. Why did I eventually come? During the period of 21 days delay, you maintained your confession. Your maintained confession brought me here. He said, he says, from the first day, your words were heard. He said, for my eventual coming, there was a lag. But during the lag, you were not talking nonsense. You, were, you kept on saying, you kept on saying, you kept on saying, you kept on saying. He said, he said, and I am come. He says, the reason why eventually I'm here. So that meant that when there was that warfare in the spirit between the prince of passion and Gabriel, if Daniel had said the wrong thing, he would have aborted the process. Because in the spirit there was a tussle. The prince of passion, a demonic spirit, and Gabriel were fighting. Until the archangel Michael came. But Mike, Gabriel said, the reason why that thing was sustained in your favor was because when you saw nothing, you kept on talking. One of the things you must then to see is this, and this is the battle of faith. When you see what you don't want to maintain what you want in speech. This is one of the biggest battles. When you see what you don't want to maintain what you want in your language. That's why in Genesis 1, the Bible says, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, this is darkness. What did he say? Let there be light. God did not say what he saw. He said what he wanted to see. If you are like God, say what you want to see, sir. You go into that business and you see, you just see 1.5 million in the account. You say, Father, thank you. The picture has come. Now we have hit our first 1.5 billionaire. You look at the womb. You don't see what the doctor said. You see the child. You see the child. And let me say something to you. The most difficult time is the time when there's a wait. Because in that time, there are spiritual transaction and tussle going on. And it's a battle of words. It's the person that is what is loudest and consistent that the victory will come in their favor. Are you here? So the reason why some people are not answered is because of they're not taking action. Some people, some people, it's um wrong confession. And the last people, set of people is this, is mentality. What is mentality? They're praying about something and sincerely they think if God will answer this, he will do it this way. But you are not God. The Bible says God's ways are higher than our way. Let God do it the way he wants. A man in the Bible that would have missed this by his miracle was Naaman. Naaman said, he went to see Elisha. He was leprous. They said, go and jump in the river seven times. He said, ah, what nonsense is that? He said, don't, he said, river Samaria, dirty river. Ah, ah, I used to go and jump in that dirty river. When there are Gaba, Abana, quality rivers in my country. He said, I thought the man of God will come and put his hand on my head and I'll be healed. But that was not how God led him. You are the one that thought you will find your husband somewhere else. He may be in your office. Yes. Oh, yeah. But yeah, you made a vow. I'll never disorder my office. Why are you? <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. The funding thing you are looking for, it may be your younger brother. You say, ah, how can I think of my younger brother? Listen, let God use who he wants to use. Sometimes it's the pride and ego that is holding you down. Where's my ball? Sometimes it's the pride and the what? Ego. Ego that is holding you down. It, it must be this way. It must be that way. Are you here? So what happens to people is this. this, this th thank you for bringing the ball. Thank you. Yeah. Where's my other... What, what's my other brother? Let me just get someone here that can... Uh, my brother here, come. Yeah. Just come stand here. 
And it's very simple. Imagine that this is God. This ball, lift up the ball for me. This is the result. This is how we miss America. This is the result we want. This is the result we want. This is God. This is us. Are you getting it? This is us. Because we have our mind, we want our God to answer the prayer. We say, hmm, the prayer is going to come from the right. So we position for what? For the right. I want to position for the right. Good. Because that's how we think in our mind. Prayer, the answer to the prayer will come from the right. But God being willing, pass the ball to the left. Look at that. He didn't catch the result. Not because the prayer was not answered. He didn't catch the result because it was not positioned rightly. Because his mindset has turned him aside. That's why the Bible says that everyone that asks to receive it, if you are not receiving, you may be wrongly positioned. You mean what? Wrongly positioned. So, bring back the ball. Bring back the ball. Let's show you quickly. This is the ball. It's position. Until I go to Canada, I can't succeed. God is kicking blessings to him in Nigeria. No, I can't catch blessing in Nigeria. Blessing must come in Canada. Bring back the ball. Position again. I can't date someone in my office. God put husband in the office. God said, take husband. He said, no. The person is there. Is there. And he's saying, he will start fasting and praying. Akiapa, shaka. They say, I need deliverance. You will go, they will break your head. You will not hear. And listen to me. The Bible says to obey is better than sacrifice. Do you hear what I'm talking about? The funding will come from your wife. I can never take money from my wife because it's keep being proud. <laughs> you are catching nothing. Did you hear how God fed Elijah? He used raven's bed. If you were you, will you take food from bed's mouth? You say, is he hygienic or not? What nonsense. <laughs> the major reason, I'm showing you. So, people don't receive because there's a way in their mind they've conceived their miracle. That, ah, when God will do it, this, my rich uncle, is going to call me. And he's going to write me a check for 15.5 million. I'll use it to start. And that's how God wants to start. Listen to what the Bible says. The ways of God are higher than our ways. Ladies and gentlemen, calm down. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, calm down. So, this is what we now want to do. We want to force God to do it our way. God says, uh uh-uh. uh. That's why he says God resisted the proud. Who is the proud? The egoistic person. And exalts the humble. Are you there? Are you there? Because in our mind, and let me tell you something. Have a look over here. One of the key reasons why God does not choose the way that is our own. This is a simple reason. If he does it, you will not trust him. So God needs to take you through a path you don't understand. That you follow not because you understand. You follow because you trust. Because eventually what God wants from you is not a miracle. Miracle will come and go. Husband will come and go. Job will come and go. Money will come and go. What God wants for you is a deeper relationship. When you are connected with him and your trust is in him. And that trust takes process. Ah, that's why David said, David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he said, I've been with him. He said, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. We have been through some things together. It will never fail me. It will never fail me. It will never fail me. Glory to God. Just meet a sister in church after church. You never met her before. Bang, fold that. I want to take you out. She will say, Are you okay? The reason why is that it's not as if the idea of taking out is not a good idea. But if that same lady, if her husband blindfolds her, she will follow free. Because they've been through certain things that makes her realize that this guy cannot hurt me. God says, it's not about miracle, it's not about money. The process in the process of having this thing, you will learn to trust me as your source provider. 
anchor, master, savior, and sustainer. Hallelujah. Are you here? Yes, sir. Many of you, let me tell you why you're not strong Christians. You have not put yourself in a place where God can help you. I, uh, thank you. Many of you, you've not put yourself in a place God can help you. Everything you pray for are things you can achieve by yourself. That's why you cannot give yourself to it. But when you are praying for things and you desire things you cannot do by yourself, you will position for help. When they say fast, fast is play. Because you know, God, if you don't help me, I cannot help myself. And the Bible says, woe to them that trust in the arm of flesh, for the arm of flesh will fail. Let me conclude with this. So then, if I've been praying for such a long time, I've been fasting for such a long time, and what I'm praying about is not happening, what will I do? I'll give a good example. Let me have my machine again. Just a good example. And I'm just going to call someone random to come and... Thank you. It's just a blood pressure machine. I'm just going to call someone random to come and, you know. Is it okay to call someone random? Yeah, I'm going to. Um, the lady with the nose mask, will you come? Are you, are, you, are you a medical doctor? Are you con- Do you know how to use this? You never used one before. Okay, let's check your blood pressure. Please come. No, no, no. Behind you. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Y- yes. Good. Please come up, come up, come up. Yeah. That's it. All you have to do, just use it. That's just, let's check your blood pressure. You seem like someone that has normal blood pressure. <laughs> yes, just use it. That's why you have just set it up. Any way you want to set it, just set it up. If you like, you want to eat it, it's also, it's also okay. Okay. <laughs> I too know. If you call them on the stage now, they will not come. From their seat, they will be telling us answer. Just do it the way you know how to do it. That's okay. Okay, it's like a wristband style. So. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Do, if you want to stop it, stop it. That's fine. Anything you want to do. Eh, just press it. Are you okay now? Should we stop? It's stopping. It's stopping. Okay. It's not stopping. With this blood pressure, you need to be in the hospital. <laughs> because your blood pressure says you're almost at 200. <laughs> what? What is it? Well, you think you're healthy. I think you're also healthy. This is, this is two things. Number one, because you don't know how to use this machine, you get the wrong result. Does it mean the machine is not working? What do you do? If you don't use the machine, what do you do? If you had the option, what would you have done? I'd get a professional. You'll get a professional. Or you'll read the manual. When prayer does not work, you will get the wrong results. When, sorry, when you don't know how to use prayer, rather, you will get the wrong results. When you're getting the result, result prayer, it's not the machine that's the problem. Go to the manual and say, how do I set it up? What is the prayer manual? It's the Bible. Before you condemn the machine, go to the manual. If the manual does not work, get professionals. Avestas TV, message on prayer. Those are professional advice for you. 
Rather, you will be there pressing it until you spoil the machine. You know, it's not working. Should I stop it? No, I should not stop it. Press it here. Press. Now, our blood pressure is 200 and something. Can you believe that? So, you'll be wondering, how come I'm malfunctioning? How come I'm getting bad results? How come I'm getting it? But, thank you. I, I can, you can take it to your seat. Let me take it to your seat. They will get it from you in your seat. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But what I'm saying so is that this is how prayer works. This is how prayer works. This is how prayer works. If you use the machine, you don't know how to use it. So, many of you just conclude, God is not in prayer. God is not kind. God is not faithful. God is not this. Before you conclude, go back and say, let me check the machine. Let me read the manual. Let me get professional help. That's the first step. What do you think? Correct. Let's close. Who? Amen. 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 So then, a prayer, a praying, watch this now. She didn't have to use the machine. What she, she just began to press it. And this is what brings frustration. You don't know how to pray to get results. You now begin to say, I'll pray three hours. I'll add fasting. I'll add this. What you add to it does not change the result. You don't know how to use it. Is that not so? Ah. When prayer is not working, this is what you do. James chapter 2. Let, let's read that quickly. James chapter 1, rather, verse 2. James chapter 1, verse 2. It says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse tough times. You know, King James said temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patient. And let patience have a perfect work, that you may be perfect, and your entire one thing nothing. So see what it was saying. It was talking about tough times. So it says, when well, you are going to tough time, let patience have a total work. But look at verse 5. If the tough time persists and patience have had the total work and you are still there, what should you do? It says, what should you do? Begin to pray. What? It says, if any man lack wisdom. Why did he bring about wisdom here? The connection was this. If you are going through a tough time and you have prayed and patience have had a perfect work and you don't see the results you want, begin to pray for wisdom. What's wisdom? Lord, guide me, guide the answer concerning this issue. What is the prayer? So, if you are praying about something and you don't see the results you want, the first thing is to step back. Stop praying. That's the first thing. You've prayed and prayed. You've done everything. You've taken action, spoken right. Stop praying. What do you want to do? The first thing is this. You, you, you don't need, because stop praying the way you are praying about that thing. No more. Come down. What do you now do? You now start with another prayer. This is the prayer you pray when your prayer is not working. It's called the prayer of inquiry. The prayer of inquiry is not the prayer for God to do something. The prayer of inquiry is to say, God, this thing I'm praying and fasting about, I know you are faithful. I know you are kind. Why is it not working? What should I do together? That's the prayer of inquiry. Hallelujah. I will show you in the Bible. In the book of Joshua, they went to... They, after they finished Jericho, Jericho was a big victory for them. They want to take one small country. Just imagine that if a country had beaten America, all of a sudden they want to fight Nigeria. Won't we be afraid? Won't we be afraid? We will. All of a sudden, now the con Nigeria now defeats the country. It's, it's like, ah, oh, no. Ah, no, Nigeria is even better. Let's say that this country defeated the United States of America. They now want to fight. That same country now to fight Cameroon. Without Brainer, that was how it was. Israel had defeated Jericho. They were now going to fight AI. AI was a small city. Joshua said, pick few men, just go and destroy the city. When they got there, AI destroyed them. Joshua came back and said, Joshua chapter 6, he stayed at the temple for money to leave me. He said, Lord, what happened? Ah! People that should never beat us are beating us. What was he saying? It was a private inquiry. Lord, we are finished. You told us you would give us the land. We went as you have said. They beaten us. The Bible says, as Joshua was there, God's voice came. God told him. He said, there's someone that's touched the cursed thing in the camp. It's the cursed thing that brought that. That's what prayer of inquiry does. If there's a dimension to the prayer you don't know, it will reveal it. That's why it's a prayer for wisdom on how to deal with the issue. It's a prayer for wisdom on how to deal with the issue. Because you have been praying, you have been fasting, you have been praying. So, Lord, I know you are faithful. 
How do I deal with this issue? Is it a timing issue? Is it a redirection issue? How do I deal with this issue? Because it's not about exerting energy. Exerting energy is about how do I deal with this issue? Look at the story of David and Ziklag. They came and took the whole family. David not go and fight battle. Though. David went to meet the priest. He said, Sir, inquire of the Lord. Shall I go? Shall I overtake? He said, and the word came. He said, go. Overtake. Pursue. Overtake. Recover. This is practical prayer of inquiry. The apostles were trying to cast out demon from a child. Come on. Go in. Come on. The demon did not go out. Until Jesus Christ came. Just cast out demon. As soon as the apostles saw Jesus Christ, they went to meet him. Sir, please explain to us why our one plus one was zero, but your own one plus one was two. What part of the equation are we missing? Because we are both fasting. We are both praying. We are both using faith. We are both saying the same thing. And Jesus began to open up to them. That is what the prayer of inquiry is. So what's prayer of inquiry? The first step in the prayer of inquiry is this. The objective of the prayer of inquiry is not for God to do something. The objective is direction. Lord, I've been praying about the funding for a long time. What is wrong, sir? What should I do now? I've been praying about mine for such a long time. What is wrong, sir? What should I do now? I've been praying about this for a long time. What is wrong, sir? What should I do now? Because the prayer is meant to produce wisdom at which we used to go further. Do you get what I'm saying? Now? Yes, sir. Are you getting it? Yes, sir. But instead of that, no, 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 no. Ah, Father, I would tackle here. Ah, I would. No, no, no. Prayer is not about harassment. It's about taking faith-based steps. The second thing is this. When you're praying that prayer, you become neutral. What's neutral? You can't pray the prayer of inquiry and have and say, this is what I want it to be done. No, 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 no. That's the problem with Balaam and Balak. The prophet said, God said I should go. He was hearing himself. Why? His heart was going. So everything God said was interpreted in him what? Going. An angel appeared to him with his sword. A donkey saw an angel. May you not come across a blind prophet. The donkey of the prophet saw an angel with a drawn sword and knocked him off so he doesn't die. He took a rod and beat the donkey. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what happened next? You know what happened next? He took the rod, beat the donkey. The donkey spoke and said, can't you see there's an angel ahead of me? Why are you being wicked to me? The prophet said, are you mad? Are you not meant to carry me to where I'm going to? I said, this prophet is probably deaf and blind and dumb. I said, one, angel is in front of you. You can't see. A donkey spoke. Your senses did not tell you that something supernatural has happened. The grief for what the king will give him has entered. Practically blind. Practically deaf and dumb. Why? His eye was on the game. His eye was on the game. That's why many of you, your eye is on wedding. You can't see anything. Even if it's a demon, I will marry. I will marry. Praise God. I say hallelujah. hallelujah. So what do you do? When well, you're praying about this marriage thing, praying about this thing, I don't know what to do. You go back to the manual. You go back to the professional, the Holy Ghost. So you, the, listen, Holy Ghost is our lesson teacher. If 1 plus 1 equals to 2, I do 1 plus 1, it's, not, it's giving 0. Holy Ghost, why is my 1 plus 1 giving 0? He's the one that knows in and out of everything. He's going to break down the formula to you, tell you as it pertains to you. But to do that, you must be in a neutral state. Let's pray.